let's talk now about the basics of the math section. The more you know about the math section, the better you'll prepared you'll be to actually attack the section and do well in it. So it's good to know the basic layout and structure of that particular part of the test. So the math uh, section is made up of three sections. You've got a 20 question, 25 minute section, an 18 question, 25 minute section, and this is where your grid ends are. And then you've got a 16 question, 20 minute section. Now occasionally you might have a fourth math section. And if you do, that section would be an experimental section. So it doesn't count towards your score. They just use it to test for future questions. But you really can't tell which one is the experimental. I mean, maybe you can narrow it down to two. If you say have two grid in sections, you know, one of those is experimental. But don't try to guess. Just treat them as if they're all, they all count. Now, how is the math section scored? So the math section is scored as follows. So you get plus one if you get a question right. You get plus one raw point. You get no credit if you omit. And then here's the big difference. You get minus one quarter point if you put down an answer and get it wrong. So not only do you not get credit for the question, obviously, you actually lose points that you had earned elsewhere. So we talk in a future video about guessing. So I'll mention that there. One thing about the wrongs is that you actually don't get this minus one quarter for the grid ins. For the grid ins, you just get you know no credit. Uh, so feel free to guess as much as you like on the grid ins because there's no penalty to getting it wrong. Let's talk about the question types. So there are two question types. One is the obvious, you know, multiple choice, five choices, read the question, answer it. The other is the grid in. So this is one where there are no multiple choices. You have to come up with your own response and bubble it in uh, as appropriate. So most students find these to be harder than the multiple choice, just because obviously you've got nothing to work with. You have no idea what the answer could be. Whereas here you've got some idea of, you know, at least the order of magnitude of the answer. Let's talk about the scoring rubric. The main thing, as you can see in the math section, so notice your raw score is on the left. So if you get all 54 questions right, you get all 54 plus ones, you get an 800. And this is pretty standard. As soon as you get one wrong, you're dropping out of the 800. So if you're looking for a perfect score, there's no room for error. But then also notice that the drop is pretty steep in general. So if you're looking for a 700, usually you're looking at, let's see, one, two, three wrong, which puts you at a 740, but actually with the minus one quarter, it would knock you down to a 720. So three wrong on this particular version of the test would be a 720. Now that's why, as you can see, the curve is so steep. If you're going for a 700 plus, the points add up. If you get another two or three wrong, you're already at the 700 limit. So it really makes things very tight. You have to be very careful at the top levels if you're looking for a 700 plus. So you really don't have much room to omit. You don't have much room to get questions wrong. So just keep that in mind. The curve flattens out a bit as you get lower, but um, obviously that makes sense given that there are more questions and points there. But just keep that in mind if you're going for a higher score. Order of difficulty. The math section, like the critical reading, sentence completions, and the grammar questions, do have an order of difficulty. So we can see in this 20 question section, the order is going from ones to twos to threes to fours jumping down to a two, which is a bit strange, then back up to fours and five. So, you know, it's not an exact increase. There are little blips occasionally, but it is increasing it from easy to medium to difficult. Uh, for the grid in section, note there's a little bit of a difference. So remember, there are eight multiple choice in the grid ins and then 10 grid in section in this section. So notice the multiple choice increase from ones to fours and fives, but then the difficulty resets once you hit the grid ins and they increase all the way up to five. So just keep that in mind for the 18 question section. The order of difficulty is not a third, third, third. It's a little bit different than that. Let's briefly cover the instructions to the math section. I'm just going to translate for you what these words are so you don't really need to ever read it again. Number one, use of a calculator is permitted. Note that there are some restrictions, so make sure your calculator is uh, legal for the particular test. All numbers used are real numbers, basically just no irrational, yeah, no unreal numbers, no imaginary numbers pretty much. So again, doesn't really much matter for you. This is important, but I mentioned this elsewhere. Basically, figures are drawn to scale unless uh, told otherwise. So I explained that elsewhere in the math tactic series. And then finally, four, you can, don't really worry about it. It's doesn't have any impact on you. And then notice we've got these formulas here. So we've got the main formulas and equations you need for the math test. Now there are actually are some other important formulas that aren't in this, and I do cover these in the both the math bootcamp and the tactic series. And those formulas include the slope formula, the midpoint formula, distance formula, the total number of angle degree measure in a polygon and rates so distance equals speed times time so those formulas are not in here so 
definitely ones you should know. But in general, I'd say even for the ones that are in here, it's better to know these off the top of your head so that you don't have to waste time going back and looking at them, that you can have them at hand immediately. Uh, and I'll talk more about that uh, later.